love to empower people to be successful. So I didn't have anything to refill my spirit when all of that mess happened. And uh, I just, I checked out. About two and a half, three years. You go broke with now. Uh, and I'm an artist, so I thought, man, that's really cool. I'm just going to paint and make a lot of money. Yeah. That didn't work either. <laughs> that didn't work at all. And so the last reason is to guide you through the business planning process. So when you're developing your business plan, knowing your why, this is one I put at the beginning, a business plan that actually works. Knowing your why really helps you through that process of developing a living, breathing, as you mentioned, document. You were talking about documents being living and breathing. A living, breathing document to guide you along the process. So it's going to change, it's going to evolve, and that's good. Uh, you, you're going to want that. Um, so right, real quick, so why do you need a business plan? Well, um, I'm going to be honest with you guys. None of the businesses I've ever started, I'll start with a business plan. So here I am talking to you about a business plan that actually worked, right? Um, but I didn't. I didn't know what I was doing. I had an idea, and I just started going for it. And then as it evolved, well, then I wrote a business plan. You guys may disagree with me. That's fine, but that's what I've done. That's my experience. Um, but bottom line is when you have all of these ideas, I had a guy tell me one time, he's one of my partners now, a very successful man. I have these ideas. He said, Rick, write it down. Mm -hmm. I want the details. And it's so funny. So many times I only got about two or three paragraphs and I was done. I'm like, oh, I just hadn't thought through that very well. That's not going to work. Uh, or at least I have, it may work, but I need to put more thought to it. So it is evidence that your business really works. Investors are going to need it. Suppliers are going to need it. Everybody's going to want to see your business plan. Um, it's guidance for everyone who partners with you, your co-owners, your managers, your strategic partners. I would even go out as far as saying your vendors or your suppliers. Um, we'll get into that here in just a bit. It allows you to focus and um, to free up and pursue multiple goals. Yes, you want to do that, but initially focus on your one primary goal. Um, and <clears throat> I know here it says your entrepreneurial brain is big, but not that big. You do need to be able to focus. The last one, though, to me, is the most important. Over 40% of businesses fail in this country within the first year. So by taking the time to really fully discover your why and put together a business plan, it ain't got to be perfect. And mine ain't perfect. No, I don't want anybody to be perfect. Uh, it, it's really going to be an educated guess at best, but at least to put it all down on paper and give yourself a fighting chance at staying up and seeing your dream come to life, okay? Um, so what is a business plan? We have a formal definition, a written document describing all relevant internal and external elements and strategies for starting a new venture. That sounds boring. Um, but the plain definition, it's a how-to manual to guide someone else. Now that one's really important because that's something in developing a business plan it is to guide someone else and as you're developing your business you want to develop your entire business that way you want to build a system and document everything you do that some so that you don't have to be there to work this thing every day somebody else can come in you can very easily train somebody think mcdonald's okay let's simplify this thing way down think mcdonald's and the founder of McDonald's didn't have a dream about selling burgers. The founder of McDonald's had a dream about building a business that worked, and that's what he did. It's a very well known machine. Um, it's a cookbook, ingredients, and how to mix them. Same principle, just all the different aspects of your business, how do they all intermingle together. And then a roadmap, start, point, end point, and the route. Now that one throws me off. It's like, I don't understand. I can see where I'm supposed to go out here. It took me a while, but I can kind of see the vision for my company, Meridian. I want it to be a company that empowers people to be successful. Okay, but I'm here now, and I don't know how to do 98% of that's required. So how do I see the, uh, the, end of the, the route to get there? And I had an ex-military gentleman tell me one time that they were out, they would, um, got dropped off in the middle of the night on a destination and they were given a guiding point and said you got to get there. So they knew their point. Now you got to get there and as they're walking they would come across creeks, they would come across bridges that have been blown up and they got to figure out how to navigate and get around and they might get lost but they can always look back up and see that, that destination point. And so that to me, I hope that helps. To me that gave me some kind of idea of how to do that because it, you are going to have blown up bridges 
Uh, but just to be able to know, just keep your focus on where you're going. Don't lose that focus. And don't lower the target. What your idea is good. Uh, it's great. And just keep focus on that. So I hope that helps. <clears throat> so who should write the plan? This is one of those things you love to outsource. And writing business plans typically is not fun. But all bottom line is you need to write the plan because it is your brainchild. Um, I used to get frustrated with web designers. I'd want a website and I'd want it to look a certain way and I thought I could just tell them, hey, you go to this website over here, here's the look and feel, here's kind of what I want to say, go build. And they kept asking me questions. And I'm like, well, man, I can just build a thing myself. I just keep asking all these questions. One day I built a house, and uh, actually this isn't one that we built, this one we had somebody else build, and he kept asking me questions. Well, what kind of floors do you want specifically? Do you want granite, do you want formica, what color granite? Uh, and it finally dawned on me, oh, okay. In order to get what I want, they can build it, but I must be very, very precise and communicate extremely effectively on what I want. And so, same with your business plan, you're the only one that communicate, can communicate that as effectively as anyone. Nobody else can do it. You must write the plan, sorry to tell you, but you can get help. Attorneys and accountants, um, engineers are great resources, but I'm going to tell you right here, in Dothan, Alabama, in the, in the Wiregrass area, we have phenomenal resources for help for that. Um, you have the SBA. Now this SBDC, I gotta ask, I didn't ask you guys before. You talking about the ASBDC, uh, the Small Business Development Center. The Alabama Small Business they Development Center. They come out of Detroit. Yeah, Detroit. If you guys are not familiar with that resource, please get familiar with that resource. It's the Alabama Small Business Development Center out of Troy. Uh, there's a Judy, uh, Judy, Judy Collins, Judy Judy Collins, Collins and a Bet, uh, Betsy yeah. Baker is who I talk with a lot of there. They, they're just flat out amazing. They can really work with you from concept um, all the way through the business planning process. They can work with you on a business plan that banks will actually like. Uh, it's, it's phenomenal uh, just seeing some of the work they've done. They know how to help you with the demographics, looking at your idea, the viability of the idea, and guiding you. And it is a free resource provided by the state. So if you're not, yes. Yeah. I was just going to say, uh, Judy, we'll still send you a, an email to update you on all the different kind of events that are going on. Oh, Judy will, yeah. Betsy will. They're just, man, they're rock stars over there. Uh, they have a gentleman that's a, uh, he's, an, he's an accountant, basically a timeshare CFO, and most business owners go to him and pay him for his services. Going through the, uh, the SBDC, it's free. You, you get his services, uh, you know, as part of that. Now, if you need something outside of that, of course, he's going to charge you, but for that side of it. Uh, and so that is a tremendous resource. Rick, yes. the SBDC also has a course called Next Level Course, that you can, right. with which you can link and you can take that course. I've and heard it, about that, but I don't know much about it. Can you explain? Well, I've, I've spoken at it, but it, it covers the various elements of starting a business. Okay. And it's really a good course. I think uh, people who, entrepreneurs and people who want to start businesses have found it over the years quite helpful. And is, again, is it free or is there a charge yeah, for that? It's free, yeah, it's my it's a charge. charge. And there's a charge. It's like $150. $150? Oh, that's, that's time well, that's money well spent. But you leave there with Absolutely. a business plan. And McCroy's has been to that. You leave there with the business plan? Right. That's oh, it. That's the goal of the whole program is to take you through different things to teach you about developing a business plan. Right. That's great. You know, they'll take you to the library, we'll learn how to get you what in. What are we doing here, man? You know, you know, <laughs> uh, they bring in different people to talk about different topics. They even have one where they bring in an entrepreneur right. that actually talks about their experience as far as business. So, so you know, I know the program is probably different in different areas, right? That's the end goal is for you to walk out of there with the business plan or well on your way to developing one. And the time period is longer. Of course, how long is that program? I think it's like six weeks. If I'm not right. Six well, six. you don't develop a business plan on an hour. No, right? exactly. No. But one other thing I wanted to mention, the, McCoy's, <coughs> the, the Small Business Development Center comes to the Chamber of Commerce once a month. Yes. And they set up appointments. And you, all you got to do is call the Chamber and you can schedule yourself. Right. Call and talk to Susan, right? Susan right. Taylor. Right. And yeah. you set up your appointment. And they, so they come to Dothan. You can meet with them there. I uh, met with them both in Dothan and I drove to Troy for them. Uh, the wonderful folks. So, and uh, they've changed the process slightly <coughs> that you can call, but when you call, we're going to tell you to go online and fill out this form that goes to the SBDC, and then they 
through their network decide which one's closest to you, which one will be this one. And then, but, but that gives them information to help them prepare for the meeting with you. Right. Okay. Yeah. All right. Excellent. So I see. Yes, ma'am. Um, the NCA is the Consumer Safety Board. Yes. Okay. And they're the ones that are So the uh, it's the Alabama Small Business Development Center. They're located in Troy. It's right right as you're going into Troy on the left. But again, they come to Dublin once a month. We're at four the end, end of the month. And they will be coming. They normally come what around the second week? Is that second right? Tuesday? Okay. Uh, the second second Tuesday is yeah. when they come. Mm -hmm. okay. Yeah. So yeah, here in a couple of weeks they'll be here. Um, and they come to Dothan to the Dothan Area Chamber of Commerce. That's what we're saying. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I just want to make sure everybody got that. I want to thank you guys for to, <laughs> to meet with them. All right. Very good. <laughs> And now, I'm going to be honest, the last one SCORE. I have heard a lot of good things about SCORE. I have no personal experience. So if anybody does and wants to interject, feel free. I just don't have it. Yes, sir. I don't know how you get a hold of them, but SCORE is, a, is an organization made up of retired CEOs and other executives right. who donate their time to doing what you're doing and what the Small Business Development Center does. I don't I'm hear paid. too. Huh? I'm I sorry. Don't know if I'm paid <laughs> <laughs> you got you got some free food. <laughs> uh, yeah, but score. Do we have anybody? Do we do not have a score chapter score? here. Yeah, that's the problem. They but the building one in yeah, the library. It's online. You know, I mean, you you can actually. And maybe it's even better that way because oh, you got the SPDC for personal one on one. But score, you can go online, and obviously you got the whole country. Right. resources here that they'll line you up with somebody who can specifically help you with your need. Okay, so you don't you don't have to be a local person that you can no. help you or leader. No, okay. We actually tried to start a score chapter here, right. but what happens is there's a lot of paperwork that you have to do. I personally like at the Chamber of Commerce. I have a lot of resources and I, and I have a lot I know a lot of people that can help. Yeah. We can get you to those people, but once you become a score uh, representative then you have so much information that you have to protect, and you can't say certain things. You got to turn in your paperwork to oh, the. Oh man! No. It, it's, yeah, it's a government organization. <laughs> yeah. Okay. All right. So, so let, me, let, me, let, me, let me make another. Sorry. Steve's sort of downplaying his role in this. I mean, he's not touting his role. He is a, an absolute wealth of information oh, sure is. about, about what's going him. on in this community, yeah. the economics, and the markets. If you want to talk to somebody who knows that world, this is the guy. Yeah, yeah. And the chamber is there for all of you. I mean, they're they're they're, they're service organizations out there. And so you can draw on uh, you can draw on Steve. He doesn't have anything else to do. You can draw on Steve and <laughs> give him something to do. But he he's not bragging about his role. But it is really an instrumental role in doing what you all want to do. Absolutely. You kind of stole my thunder on that one, but you're absolutely right. <laughs> and so we got universities. Of course, we're sitting in one now. But yes, the Dothan Area Chamber of Commerce. I've been members and ambassadors and diplomats with several different chambers of commerce. Dothan, Alabama's Chamber of Commerce is absolutely amazing. Uh, and so you have gentlemen like Steve. Uh, this guy, if you just spend an hour with him, listen to the story, it'd blow your mind. But a wealth of knowledge, um, just uh, amazing man. So. You want a resource? Go by and talk to the uh, to the chamber. Of Commerce. It, it, you should know this may not mean anything to you, but it, it was given a five star rating. Now, what that means is there are certain chambers in the state that are given what is really a superior rating and a five star rating. The only couple chambers in the state, Mobile, where I came from, has one, but the Dothan Chamber of Commerce has been given a five star rating. Mm -hmm. So it really is a tremendous resource for us. It is. And if you're in business and you join the chamber, one, I wouldn't say word of caution I want to give you, just advice. A lot of times people join the chamber and a year later it comes time to renew, to renew and they go, well, it didn't do anything for me. Wrong attitude. What have you done for it? And so if you join the chamber, go to the events, get involved. Go, and when you go to networking events, don't sit around with your buddies and chit chat and talk and go find somebody that you don't know. Get to know that person. And then the chamber will work amazing wonders for you. So, uh, so we have some really good uh, people to help you write the plan because it is very difficult. Uh, and again, going to marketing events, HR events, and networking. How can that help you write the plan? When we get done tonight, y'all please talk to each other. You'll find all kinds of ideas and start, you know, screaming on each other. And like you mentioned, you got the 501c3 
financing support. That's just awesome uh, just to have that here in this room. And so events like this are so good if you work it properly. Do not use it to socialize. People, you know, a lot of my friends, oh, why don't you hang out with us here? Man, I'd rather go out and hang out on the back porch with my wife than sit here and you. If there's not somebody that I, you know, some business to be done, somebody I need to meet, I can hang out with you another time. I'm going home with my wife, okay? I'm fortunate enough. I married a good, wonderful woman. I, I married so far up, it's insane. So, <laughs> yeah, I got lucky. Uh, so where do I start? Uh, Please, I, I know I say a lot of things and they're going to be horrendous and you're going to have a lot of hard work. Do not let the project scale dissuade you. Um, as it says, you're an entrepreneur, you're going to be doing something anyway. Um, so you might as well, so don't let that dissuade you. Uh, and I say it personally, I've let it dissuade me. I was even talking to a gentleman this morning about, you know, should I really be doing this? He's like, man, you know the answer, just get off your butt and do it. And so uh, start with your personal vision, very important. What do you want to be doing in seven years? What kind of impact do you want to make? What really resonates inside of you at your core? Turn it into a personal mission. So you have this great dream, something you want to be doing, what I want to be doing in seven years, what are you going to do right